before replacing your starter motor, you must disconnect the battery on the car. There's a lot of voltage going straight to the starter motor and you're working in a tight space. Make sure you disconnect the battery before you begin this procedure. Open the deck lid and remove the air box. Begin by loosening the hose clamp holding the boot to the throttle body, green arrow. Then squeeze the tabs on the MAF connector to release it as indicated by the yellow arrows. Now open the harness holder clip, purple arrow. Pull the oil filler tube up and out of its clip on the air box as indicated by the blue arrow. And finally, unbolt the 13 millimeter bolt holding the air box inside the engine compartment, red arrow, and carefully lift the air box out of the car. Remove the four 10 millimeter bolts, green arrows, and also the 10 millimeter nut, purple arrow, holding the throttle body to the engine. At the same time, also remove the electrical connector going into the throttle position sensor as indicated by the yellow arrow. If you have an early car with a throttle cable, rotate the throttle back enough to relieve tension on the throttle cable and slip it out of the plastic cable cam as shown here. On the older cars only, rotate the throttle body over to access the hose connection on the back side. On the older cars, use a pair of pliers and loosen and remove the hose clamp holding the hose onto the throttle body. Don't forget to pull the O-ring out of the intake plenum that seals the throttle body to it. Again, on the older cars only, follow the hose connection coming off of the throttle back to the control solenoid and press the wire piece in to release the electrical connector. Now place the hose solenoid assembly off to the side. Once the throttle body is removed, you'll need to remove the intake plenums. Begin by removing the air hose connection to the oil separator. Squeeze the black plastic connector, purple arrow, to disconnect the hose from the plenum. Once free, set the hose connection aside. Now loosen the hose clamp, securing the plenum to each manifold, green arrows. It's a good idea here to loosen the inner hose clamps first and then rotate the plenum to help break the seal that may have formed between the rubber. Then tighten the inner and loosen the outer clamps and do the same to break the connection between the rubber seals and the intake manifolds. Sometimes they can stick together making removal a bit difficult and this will help free them up. As you will note there is not a lot of room to work and anything that makes it easier will help. Once the hose clamps are loose, you should be able to push the intake seals into the plenum, then slide the plenum over to one side and pull it free of the manifold. Shown here are the two electrical connections you will need to remove from the starter. The green arrow points to the main power connection coming directly from the battery of the car to the 13 millimeter nut on the starter motor. This is why you should have disconnected the battery before you started this job. The purple arrow points to the 10 millimeter nut securing the electrical connection to the solenoid. You'll need to use a combination of extensions and U-joints to remove the nuts holding the electrical connections to the starter as shown here. As with the electrical connections, you'll need to find the right combination of U-joints and extensions to reach the two 15 millimeter bolts on either side of the starter motor, green arrows. Once the bolts are removed, carefully remove the starter from under the intake plenum and out of the engine. Shown here is the shot of the engine with the starter removed. At this point, installation is the opposite of removal. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and check out another video in this series.